Okay, so today's video, we're going to do a quick unboxing and review of ZWO's ASI 533 mono camera. My main purpose for this is for solo photography. I have a dedicated hydrogen alpha solar scope and the 533 pairs up nicely with it and allows me to image the sun full disc. Where my ASI 174mm mini, which is what I was using previously, will only allow me to get into about maybe a third of the sun. I would have to actually build a mosaic to get a full disc. So this makes it a lot easier for me. I, if I want to do a full disc image of the sun or a time lapse, it frames it up nicely for me. So I'll show you how I have it set up on my solo rig and how I use it and a couple images and a time lapse at the end. So let's get to it. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Okay, let's start with taking a look at what comes in the box. Uh, we have our USB cables. The first one is a three meter USB A to B. And then we have two smaller um, half meter cables, same thing, USB A to USB B. And then we have our M42 to M48 extender at 16 and a half millimeters. And then our M42 to M42, 21 millimeter. Nose piece, an M42 to M48 adapter and a T2 to inch and a quarter adapter. They also give us four very thin spacers here. You can see the, how flexible they are. They're different thicknesses as well. It's hard to see on camera, but I can feel them as I flex them in my hands that some are a little bit stiffer than the others. So the other thing you get is a nice little carrying case for it. And that brings us to the star of the show, which is the camera itself. So uh, dust cap as expected. Like I said, it's a square sensor. And on the back side, we have our 12 volt power in, so you will need a power supply to provide that 12 volts to it. It needs to be at least a three amp power supply, USB connection in, and then you have two outs for your filter wheel or your guide camera or anything external like that that you need to connect into it. So it's got the USB hub built in. So the sensor, the IMX 533 has no amp glow, so you don't have to worry about calibrating that out. Um, as mentioned before, it's a one inch sensor. Square resolution is 3008 by 3008. Pixel size is 3.76. Quantum efficiency comes in on the mono camera at 91%. If you have the color version of this camera, it's 80% for the quantum efficiency. Full well depth is 50,000. And this is a 14 bit camera. Max frame rate is 20 frames per second. Now, like I mentioned in the intro, my primary use for this is going to be for my solar setup, but obviously the camera is designed to be used for deep sky imaging. So with a proper set of filters and a filter wheel for this camera, I could use it for that as well. But again, like I said, I'm using it for my solar setup. Now, 20 frames per second generally isn't that great for doing solar, planetary, or lunar. Um, the more frames per second that we can get out of a camera for the lucky imaging, the better we are. But it works well for the solar for my intended purposes. And this is going to be my workhorse for capturing images of the sun behind my HA solar scope. So let's just take a quick look at how I have things hooked up on my rig and show you some of the images and time lapses I was able to accomplish with this little camera. All right, so the 533 is attached to my Daystar Solar Scout. I have an electronic autofocuser as well from ZWO, my SV Boney power box, and everything is riding on the Skywatcher Star Adventurer GTI. And all of this equipment is controlled with the Melee Mini PC that I have mounted under the scope. All right, so I am connecting remotely into the Mini PC on the solar rig and running sharp cap. So we will get our camera connected. And while that's setting itself up, I am going to run Stellarium. And I use Stellarium just as a quick and easy way to get at least close to the sun. I will have to make some adjustments out there to get it in my field of view. But like I said, Stellarium is just a, a quick and easy way for me to, to get close enough to the sun. All right, so I'll just do a search for the sun in Stellarium. And just gonna go full screen here. So my commands will pass through my remote desktop connection. We'll just hit control one and it'll slew them out for me towards the sun. And you can see it bringing the reticle over for the GTI. All right, so now we're centered on the sun as far as Stellarium is concerned, but I need to go outside and actually square things up a little bit better. Because if I come over into sharp cap and we we'll bump up the gain here, and you can see there's, there's nothing in my field of view. The histogram is getting a little bit of a slope on the left-hand side, which could be an indication that I'm a little bit close to the sun, but we need to go outside and um, adjust the scope with the solar finder that came with the Daystar. So this is the solar finder that came with the scope and you can see the sun is just off of the center a little bit. So making adjustments just by loosening my deck 
and then the RA and trying to get that dot right in the center as close to it as possible. And then check it on the computer again and see what it looks like. Now it's just a matter of bumping the mount to get the sun centered in my field of view. You can see we're way overexposed, but we'll take care of that here in just a moment. Bring my exposure down to about four seconds, I think. Be a good number to start with. And we need to bring the gain back down too. All right, and there we go. This is the main reason that I wanted to use the 533 with my solar scope because of the field of view. It frames it nicely for me. Where my other cameras will allow me to get closer into the edge, but like maybe a, the, a third or a quarter of the sun, which is great too, right? Get You get up close on some of these prominences and such, but there's times when I wanted to do a full disc image of the sun. I could do mosaics, I know that, but again, the 533, it's a great camera, not just only for deep space stuff, but for me to be able to play around with the with my solar imaging as well. If you guys haven't done solar imaging through a solar scope like this, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. I got some clouds coming in, you can see them, but it's all the surface detail, you can see prominences around the edge. See if we can't bring those up a little bit more. So you can see them starting to appear around the edge here as I bring up the gain. I am going to get this dialed in and focus and, and wait for these thin clouds to pass, and I'll show you guys my resulting image from it. Okay, so those thin clouds got worse and I wasn't able to do the imaging that I wanted to while I was making this video, but I do have an image and time maps that I did previously, same setup, same camera and everything. So I'll show those to you guys here in just a couple minutes. But before I do, I just wanna say thanks to all my members, both here on YouTube and on Buy Me A Coffee. I appreciate everybody's support. Thanks to all of you who have liked and shared the video. It really helps the channel grow. So if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing, hit that bell icon so you'll get a notification every time I drop a video. If you're not a member of the channel, consider becoming one it's as low as 99 cents per month and when you join you get a copy of my beginner's guide for zero absolutely free again thanks to everybody for watching and here's my image and time lapse taking through the zwo asi 533 mono camera we'll see you on the next video in clear skies